we are growing up without borders and this is country 121 for us we arrived two days ago and since coming we've absolutely loved it in today's video we're going to take you on a tour of the downtown vibrant city where chaos blends with tranquility busiest city in the entire world from busy crosswalks this is wild palaces and temples to the adventurous metros so many people join us on today's journey as we dive into the enchanting heart of tokyo japan Stop of the day, Tokyo Metro. Want the good, want the bad, all the fear. Something Japan's prone to is earthquakes. A lot of their buildings are built to withstand earthquakes because if not, they'll just collapse and they have to rebuild it. So here is the Tokyo station. It was built in like the 1900s. They rebuilt it as well to make it earthquake resistance because here in Japan, they do get quite a few earthquakes and it goes directly in path of the Imperial Palace. So when there's a new like person in government anointed or such, they go in a carriage ride and they go straight down to meet the emperor because here in Japan they still have an emperor and over here as you walk out you've got the business district which houses many many corporations and big companies so it's only two blocks away from that Tokyo station to the Imperial Palace and it's separated by two moats so you walk through and then you go through these gates and then there's another one and the emperor you can't actually go in to, of course, the Imperial Palace, but you can twice a year, once on New Year's and once on his birthday, and he'll come out and wave to everyone. All right, here's some history facts for you. The emperor used to live in Kyoto, and that was the capital. Then in 1602, this was like the political center, and only in 1868 did the emperor and his family move to here to Tokyo, and it became the capital. And actually, the name used to be Edo, E-D-O, and then it became Tokyo. The emperor and his family still live in the palace to date, but they don't have any more political power. They're just spectators in the government. So as you can see, Tokyo is massive. This is the whole like business sector, and then over that way is more all their like um, ministry offices, if you will, like the, the parliament offices. And um, the whole city of Tokyo has 30 million people if you count the metropolitan kind of area around Tokyo. So 30 million people all live in this area. It's just massive. And there are 23 districts, like 23, I guess a district would be like a neighborhood maybe, massive neighborhoods. So this whole like part that you're seeing here, it actually goes all the way, loops all the way around the Imperial Palace. And it's 5k to do the whole loop. So a lot of people will you know, go jogging and get their exercise in that loop. So there's a line here in Tokyo called the JR line that connects almost every single district because it goes in a circle, kind of like the Hunger Games. This is the map of the park and this is a beautiful, peaceful area here in Tokyo. And it's where about a hundred years ago, Emperor Miju had died. They built this shrine to put his body and his remains. And so um, all these trees that you're seeing around us here, they were not actually here. So they sent about 300 different trees from all over Japan, um, basically for their emperor because everyone just loved him. And so they've planted all these beautiful trees and it's made it a beautiful, beautiful walkway uh, getting to the shrine. This is all French wine, and on the other side you have all Japanese sack wine. And why do they have French wine here? I have no clue, actually. <laughs> Before you go into the shrines, you always wash your hands.
This was so cool because once we came through the gates, there was a wedding and we saw a traditional Japanese wedding. So this tree in front of me is for couples. So you can make wishes for a happy couple relationship. It's like their mistletoe? I don't know. I don't think so. But it's to wish happy a happy couples or a happy marriage. So behind me is the Meiji Shrine and it's where the Imperial's like soul is buried. Not his remains, but just where they captured his like soul, we believe. And um, on New Year's, they have about three million people that visit it. Over three days, yeah. Ginger snaps. Where are we? Okay. Snaps? We decided to come to IKEA. We do this when we're at home too in Europe. Because you get really good ice cream and it's really like it's only 50 yen. It sounds so funny, but we love IKEA and so it's comforting like the Swedish meatballs or like these chocolate we often get. Ginger snaps we get all the time from IKEA. They're really good. We're getting soft served ice cream. This is got our ice cream ice lady. Cream. We got our ice, cream. ice cream time. We are now approaching one of the most popular youthful, hip streets that there are. Every single youth in Japan wants to come to the street. It is called... Nagashisa Street! I know why it's the most popular street for youth. It's because they have McDonald's. How do you say McDonald's? Yes, Makudonarudo. Not only is this a very popular street, but it's also a street full of style. Anybody into capsule toys? You know all those toys that you get when you're little kids? Check this out. So as most capsule things, you put money in, you twist it, and you grab your little ball. And you get yeah, a little But toy. I've never seen this many in one spot. It's a little store. Here they have traditional Japanese candy. Something in Japan that you can find on the street is this cheese bowl. It's basically like grilled cheese, but it's rainbow. I've seen so many people online come and try this. I guess there's a huge hype about it because it's so colorful. Rainbow That's cheese. That's it there. You can even buy rainbow cotton candy. So I think we know where the theme is going here. Rainbow. Here is the map of the area. As you can see, it's one large street with tons of fun things to see and do. I really wouldn't mind. Normally crepes, they have the food inside. These ones are outside. I'll just be polite and polite. We're gonna show you what is inside a 7-Eleven here in Japan. Let's go. They like the coffee lattes here, and they always come with straws. Oh, and peach tea, I've never seen this before. It comes in like a little carton, like a milk carton. You can't forget your Nintendo cards because everyone loves Nintendo here different pre-made meals. You can buy eclairs. Lots of ramen noodles. Here in Japan, the ramen noodles aren't like ramen anywhere else in the world. We will show you more about them in an upcoming video. Something that's popular in Japan is this. It's like two slices of white bread, cream, and fruit in the middle. That's something that everyone tries as well. You can even buy fish that's like cod and like seaweed. Looks like lots of different sushi and seaweed and seafood and all sorts. You can even buy beer and they even have whiskey with coke. Oh my. Here you have a dog cafe and... It's a cat cafe! Look how cute they are. They even have rainbow red. They have an otter cafe. We can go hang out with otters. <laughs> what? That sounds so good. And they have names. Them. They each have a name. Holy, holy, look at their shoes! Look at their shoes! Look. Oh my gosh, that is so cool! Hey, this would put, fit Chloe's feet! I would totally wear shoes like that. You're joking? No, I'm not joking, because then you'd be so much taller. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful wow. they are! I thought you were going to yeah. say that, eh. I'm not joking. Angelique thinks I'm joking, but when I was 20, I used to wear orange shoes with big platforms like that because then I'm like that much taller. I love them. Like seriously, look at how cool. These are the coolest shoes I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, I love them. What unique to see 
see their style clothing. Look at this. Look at that set. They're selling the school skirts that you try and pull up at school because you don't like the length of them. Here in Japan, all the skirts have shorts underneath of them. Next up, we found this area to go have some lunch. We're gonna get some lunch. It's like Barbie Dolls World. These are like makeup booths. You can come here and like do your makeup and such, which is pretty cool. So here in Japan, all the kids that go to school, most of them are wearing school uniforms, wow. like you see here. And Angelique's just saying that in the anime, she sees them. They look like little sailor girls. It's so cute. Just got some fried chicken and look, there's rainbow sprinkles. Something you see a lot of here in Japan is crazy fashion. their back street and uh, from what I heard it's more for like a little bit older like 20 year olds the other one is more teenager this is a really cool shoe shop so not only do they have like the cat cafes and the owl cafes and all that but that one's a zoo cafe meaning they have many different animals not only do they have trending shops and stores and boutiques but even what looks to be some art maybe galleries figurines we're now crossing a bridge and down below is a street where you've got every kind of fashionable and uh, high-end store like Fendi and Dior and all of the, the different brands so you kind of have like the teenager street which leads into like the 20 year old street now leading into where people can afford to buy the high-end brand street <laughs> it's crazy how much the atmosphere changes one's like so chaotic busy youthful now this is the more complex 20 year old vibes no 20 year olds are over there still trendy a bit in between now this is very like this is like posh. posh what streets are we on now girls Cat Street. Cat Street. Um, we don't know why it's called Cat Street, so leave a comment below why you think it might be called that. More than just like when you go to what you think of a, um, oh like outlets if you will, of all the name brands you think of like box stores and stuff, this is like a boutique-ish street with all the different um, little shops and they're all uniquely in these beautiful buildings and all unique little shops. It's such an amazing experience for shopping. So behind me is a shop and you can custom make your own Converse. Really? It's really cool. That is the number one local news channel and they're apparently live. And this is an ad truck where they can actually play music and promote their ad as they drive around. So this is definitely the modern side of Tokyo. I've and always wanted to see a robot serving us this something. Is so cool. And it's called Hana Cafe, which means strange cafe. Strange cafe. Well, it is pretty strange when somebody serves you a drink yeah. and they're not a human. <laughs> and then he's gonna make so it. He's a robot? Yeah, this is oh, so sorry. cool. We should order more coffee yeah. and yeah. see him work. Oh, is he talking yeah. to you? He even makes it in everything? What? Did you guys know you can get a robot that actually makes you dinners, like in your kitchen? It's only about 10,000 US dollars. But you can have home cooked meals by a robot. The way it works is you choose your drink, it prints a ticket which you scan under a scanner, and then the robot gets to work at making your drink. Since we got an iced coffee, he started with the ice and moved on to make the coffee. This is pretty amazing. It's uh, this is futuristic. <laughs> Thank you, Tom the robot. You make really good coffee. <laughs> See that bus behind me with the dog on it? That's about Hatchy because this area was where it was basically made. It's pretty cool. It looks 3D. Wild 
crossing the street with all the other people going across. How much fun. People are everywhere. Fun fact, on a weekday when it's super busy, 300,000 people can cross at once. Okay, you guys know the story about Hachi the dog. Well, the original movie originated here in Japan and then Richard Gere made a movie out of it. So if you haven't seen it, you have to go see it because it's such a sad and cute movie. Our next stop is Upslap Tower. This is Shibuya Tower. First, you go to the 14th floor, then you walk to the second elevator. Oh, look at that! Oh my gosh! Going all the way to the 45th floor. Oh my gosh, you can see all of Tokyo below you. Wow, look at this. Yeah, that's where the shrine is. You can see in the middle there. That's the park we walked through. You can like come here and everyone could just sit and enjoy and like take in the view. It's all People, open air. I saw on the poster, a group of ladies come and do yoga. Really? Yay, they have Auckland! How far are we away from Auckland, Chloe? 8,848 kilometers. Sorry. Ah. <laughs> Over in the distance is the Tokyo Tower. It was inspired by the Eiffel Tower. That's the Tokyo Tower there. And that's the Sky Tree. So, I've heard this from Chloe that apparently when you buy a phone here, you cannot silence your phone when you take a photo. So, all you hear is click, 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 click everywhere you go. Pretty funny. For those needing a little rest, there's a hammock area where you can just chill and relax. This is a really fun experience, especially because everything's open. You yeah. know, most towers or tours that you go in have like this closed area, but this one's fully open, so you feel like you're. And you have fresh air. Yeah, it's just a really cool experience, and the views are, are spectacular. Beautiful. So there's the two platforms there's the one that's the open one, and then there's the one down below, which is kind of more enclosed. like a coffee shop and bar up here come enjoy the views now it's time to catch the metro and go see some more sites here in japan they have the, the slow line and then the people in the fast line just like in the uk where's my personal space <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is at peak hour. People everywhere. How was that, Julia? Uh, pretty good. It wasn't too bad. We're right now in Shinjuku Station. It's the busiest one in the entire world. About 2 million people pass through every single day. So yes, this is our last district. We're going to see tonight Shinjuku. It's the commercial area, but there's a lot of nightlife. And because it's 5.30 at night, we're coming at a good time. So one thing is, when you're here in Japan, you do not find any garbages on the street. But there's a reason why. And did you know that since 9-11, they were a little bit concerned that there'd be bombs in the, in the garbage cans, so they basically removed all of it. Yep, that's why. I wanted to say this street, yes, where you went to, is where you can find little like spots to eat and there's wood lanterns. It's so cute. Oh, let's go see it. It's a tiny street.
This place is so cute and it's the perfect place to come have a nice little drink or meal after you're done work, just like these guys. Right, Tokyo is such a busy city. And like, so 1968 became the capital. A few decades after that, it was the busiest city in the entire world. This place is wild. Like, look at so I'm like, where are we? <laughs> Okay, so this area we're entering is open 24 hours. That's why it's so busy here. I feel like the whole city has all these different themed areas. Like it's all grouped. So you go here for this, you go there for that. And it makes it like kind of organized in that way. On the street, you can watch Godzilla breathe out smoke every hour. So we waited till we could see it. We are right now entering into a zone that's kind of like where the entertainers are, if you will, but not women entertainers, men entertainers. It's kind of like an escort service, but men escorting the women. And uh, it's kind of like, a little bit like ran by the mafia, if you will. So I don't know if I'll be able to film it. Oh look, there's more styling people. This is similar to what we saw earlier. It's called Golden Guy, but instead of like restaurants, they're more so bars and they're open up later on. But even at night, it looks really cool. A little alleyway of local bars. Most some are open. Something that's interesting about these little corners is that the homes are not, well, these buildings are not earthquake proof. So for an earthquake, it's not basically safe, but the people loved it so much that they fought back and they said, no, we're keeping our bars. So yeah. They've left it here. And it smells good, doesn't it? It does. There's all these tiny little doors. Like everywhere I look is a tiny door. And every door has a little bar inside. Yeah. Like that is so cool, no? Yeah. It's pretty Imagine cool. how lively it is at night. Like there's one right there that's kind of open. Really cool. So if you can imagine about 10 years ago, the way it would work is you had to know somebody who was a client to be able to go in and enjoy a drink yourself. So it's kind of like exclusive little clubs, if you will. And now um, it's more open. Some are still like that though, where you need to know somebody, but for the most part, they're open to the public. Underneath in the Metro, it's not just like a shops. They're beautiful shops. Like most countries you go to, they have this, but they have like, you know, convenience stores and stuff. But this is like a full on kind of shopping like a full-on shopping mall. I never knew it would stay. Trying to jump on the metro here. How are we gonna get on the train when it comes? Oh, Emily, one day you fall out of love. And now the time has come to say goodbye to our lovely tour guide, Junko. We've had such an amazing few days with her. Then we jumped on the metro and went on the hunt for some food and in our next video i'm gonna be hanging out with some local classmates that i met from cga we're gonna be meeting up in person for the very first time so you will not want to miss that stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video bye